Hey guys, it's your host Angela here. Welcome to another episode in your favorite show that should really be on Netflix. In this episode, we're going to learn exactly how websites actually work and understand the role of the browser and the different files that it uses to render your favorite web pages. Previously on the Complete Web Development Bootcamp, you learned that the internet consists of a wire that connects client computers with server computers. And you learned that there are special kinds of server computers called domain name service servers, which acts as a big old yellow pages phone book and can look up the IP address of any website you want to access. And when you find out that IP address, you can directly hit up the server computer for the website that you want to view and they'll send you all the files and data for your browser to be able to render it on screen. Now, the data that you receive from that server usually consists of three types of files, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And it's very likely that you would have come across these types of files or these words before because they're so common and they are so integral to how websites work. But what exactly do they do? And why are there so many different types of files? Why can't we just have one file that's, you know, a website? Well, they actually have very different jobs. So for example, the HTML code file is responsible for the content in your website. So if a website was a house, then the HTML would be the actual bricks of the house. It's the raw materials that makes up your house. Similarly, the HTML file contains the content of your website, like the text content or the images or buttons or links. The second type of files are the CSS files, and these are responsible for styling your website, like the color of the walls or the shape of your door. The CSS file determines how your website will look. So what color will the background of the page be? Or will the buttons have rounded corners? It targets all the content in your website that you created using HTML, for example, the text or the buttons, and applies the styling to those elements. So you could use CSS to make a button red and have rounded corners and the button text to have a particular font. That is what CSS is for. Now, the final component is the JavaScript code. And this is the code that allows your website to actually do things or have functionality. So if you are building a house, this would be like adding light bulbs that can turn on and off or putting in a cooker that can actually turn on a fire to heat your food. It turns your house into a home and the JavaScript code does exactly that for a website. It turns a static website, which just has pretty images or text into something that a user can actually interact with. For example, send an email in Gmail or post your breakfast on Instagram. It allows your website to actually do things and become functional, not just something pretty to look at. So if we take the Google homepage as an example again, once we receive these three types of files from the Google server, we can use our browser, which is a piece of software that specializes in dealing with these files. So when the browser loads up the HTML, we'll get to see the content of the website. So in this case, there's one image which has the Google logo, there's two buttons, and there's a text box where we can enter our search term. Now, when the browser then loads up the CSS files, then it will modify the appearance of those components. So we don't get any extra buttons or images or anything with the CSS but it will now look exactly the way Google wanted it to. The shape of that text box or the color of the buttons. And finally, using the JavaScript file, the browser gives us the functionality of this website. So we can type in a search term like Google in 1998. And by the way, you should really try this in Google because when you hit search, it'll turn Google into what it looked like in 1998. So with all these three different files, we get the content, we get the styling, and finally we get the functionality of the website. And combined together is how we create modern websites. Now with all this knowledge that we've already acquired, we can already start messing around with real websites on the internet. So if you open up your browser and head over to google.com, you can right click on the button, which is Google search and click on inspect. Now, what this does is it brings up the Chrome developer tools. 
Now, Chrome has one of the best tool suites for web developers like us. This is why at the beginning of the course, I asked you to download the Chrome browser, even if you normally use a different browser. So if you haven't yet downloaded Chrome, be sure to do it now before you continue. Otherwise, some of the things that I say might not work. In the coming lessons, we're going to be exploring the Chrome developer tools in a lot more detail. But for now, we're just going to use it to do something really simple. So you can see that Chrome Developer Tools has automatically highlighted the part of the code that's responsible for that button that I right clicked on that I wanted to inspect. And if we look carefully, you can see that the title of the button, which says Google Search, is actually in here and we can find it right here just after the word value. And if we double click on it, then we can actually edit this title for it to say something completely different. So instead of Google search, let's call it Angela search. And then once I hit enter, you'll see that update over here. Now you'll notice there's also one called ARIA label Google search, and this is actually only for text readers rather than for our browser. You can change that too, but it just means that you won't really see it on screen. It's updating something that's used behind the scenes. So be sure to double click on the correct thing. Now, depending on what HTML content we're inspecting on, the part that we have to change might be different. So for example, if you wanted to change the headlines on techcrunch.com, you can simply right click on one of those headlines, click inspect and find the part that corresponds to this headline which is right here in black, and we can double click on it to say something completely different. And you can actually change the front page of TechCrunch or BBC News or any website you want to. So this is a great way of pranking your friends, especially when they can see that you're on TechCrunch.com and the title or, or any of the other pieces of text can say whatever you want it to. And this is a great joke to play on friends who are maybe not quite as technologically advanced as you because they haven't taken the course that you have. Now, unfortunately, when I hit refresh on this website, you'll see that everything gets restored to the original version of the website. And the reason for this is because when we hit refresh, we're asking TechCrunch's servers to deliver us the HTML, CSS and JavaScript files once again so that we can render the website on our browser. But when we edit our website in the Chrome developer tools, effectively what we're changing is our local version. And this doesn't get saved when you hit refresh. So of course, then the website will update to the original content. But in the coming lessons, we're going to be working with HTML, CSS and JavaScript so that you can create and host your own websites live on the internet. And through learning how to code and how to build websites, you're going to be able to make websites that say anything you want it to look the way that you want it to and have the functionality that you need. So for all of that and more, I'll see you on the next lesson.